I'm Mark Cotton, and this is Senator Bo Panther Lockdown Edition. Afternoon team, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, strange times, and this is certainly not the way I wanted to do my makeover review on Define 2.0. I wanted to do something a bit more dramatic and do it on the water, but as things turned out, a virus has hit the planet. That was a bit of a kinder surprise for us all. I hope you're not all going uh, insane at home and you're finding things to do. Today's video, I'm gonna go over all the upgrades and changes I've done to Define. The thing was, it, the hard thing was guys, I've been talking about getting a bigger boat, but over the last 25, 30 years, it's by far the best boat I've ever owned or been in. And it's just set up perfectly for me. In the long run, talking with Grant from Senator, it's I, I was I've really struggled to uh, want to sell Defiant, and now over the last two years, I've I've been saving saving up my pennies to do the to do a few upgrades on it, and then speaking with Grant from Senator and off, offering me the awesome ambassador program and to be an ambassador for Senator, which is a massive honour. From then, I was just like, oh, well, now's the perfect time. Yes, maybe in the future there'll be another boat coming. But if so, it, I'll, I'll be going up to a 690 more than more than likely. Starting off with the, the Defiant 2.0, the major one thing we've had done is the all new battleship wrap from Senator. It's a custom camo wrap. I've gone with the Senator orange highlights that you'll see on the boat. If you get a, a Senator d designed and built and you want it in the camo wrap, those highlights you can get done in any color you want. You can go straight camo, you can go blue, green, pink, purple, whatever you want to do. So you can get it custom done to suit you. So out of the factory, that is a couple of options you can go with. Is that my neighbor? Yep, yeah, they're getting in the washing gun. Why is he talking to himself again? I've completely rewrapped uh, the bait board as well. My mate Hockey's done the refurb on that. That would be probably, I think, generation, generation four, and that is the Defiant 4.0 bait board. And maybe in the future, guys, there might be available on the market. On the back, I've still got the old trusty Yamaha 225. I uh, haven't done anything or any changes on that, guys. It's just something I can't afford to do anyway. So I've still got the same motor. It's done 1,050 hours on that, and that's in three and a half years, I believe now. Four years, three and a half, four years. And it's never let me down anyway. Other major things is I've got brand new aerials up on top of the roof and I've got them black to run in line with the stealth camo. Uh, massive thanks to Big Blue for hooking me up a good sharp deal on that. Thanks to Simrad, we've got a brand new NSS Evo 3 16 inch into the dash. And then up on the dash, I've got a brand new Simrad NSS Evo 12. Also with the Simrad desktop, I've got Senator Battleship Wrap as a desktop cover which was pretty cool actually. The 12 inch up on the dash, I purely use that for echo or at night I, I run radar on it. On the dash here, the 16, I'll run everything on it, but generally it's charts and echo. Thanks to uh, Hawks Bay Marine and Tommy for battling hard to get me a sharp deal from Fusion. So I've got a brand new Fusion Apollo in there and it's the 770 model. Now the one major problem I've had guys is Defiance deck is absolutely massive. If you watch the fishing videos you see how much room's actually on a Senator. Now at the back in the middle under the bait board I've got a 185 litre IC Tech which is a huge bin and it hardly takes up any deck space. On the overnighting on the side we put another 135 IC Tech and still gives us plenty of room but the problem with that is when we put food in there we put ice on it the ice tends to just melt through all the food everything gets drenched in salt ice and Lots of the times it's no good to actually eat. So one major problem was cooling or chilling stuff down in the boat. And I sort of rumbled my head with Andrew Havens about this. And we're like, how are we going to deal with this problem? And talking to Howie, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll carry on using it. But it's just, to me, it was just, it was driving me insane, actually. So it was coming up with a good way or a way to put a fridge into the boat. And I was looking around and Andrew's like, well, why don't we chop out one of the seats and put a small fridge under? For me, that kind of just didn't really work. And then I kind of was thinking, well, up the center of the boat, I've got a red bin and it's just full of, like, as you guys probably know, we just seem to fill our boats full of crap half the time. And, and I had that full of crap. It was like, I think I had 
about four year old food expire in there. I had more pots, I had pans, I had just, it was just full of crap and I was thinking, well, why don't I get a drawer fridge? So I started looking and found a perfect size drawer fridge that can fit under there. It's under the swabs, I can just pull it out, put all the food and stuff in there, and that's a 30 litre drawer fridge that's easily accessible. I can easily look down and see what's in there. And I always have the swabs on there because I take 10 tackle bags out and it doesn't get in the way. And that's 30 litres under, under the swabs there. And it just runs off a switch here. Hardly uses any power. I've upgraded from my $50 underwater light to a model Andrew recommended. It's about $250, but it's a lot brighter and it's blue. The other really pretty cool thing that I've got done, now I've got a full deck LEDs that go right up under the brow and right across the back and that's multicolor. You can have it green, white, blue, red, orange, disco, whatever you want. It's controlled by this little switchboard here and I've just got Velcro on it so I can just stick it up on the wall, take it off, change batteries. Basically it sits there team and up in here Andrew wired it up, he drilled a hole in here and the little sensor light or well, the little sensor that picks up the remote is just sitting or protruding out here. So I just push the lights there to change the lights. Under the brow there, I've got that white LED strip that runs right across. It's too, it's too much at night. It's just way too much. That's why I decided to get the multicolor so I can change the color, dim it right down. So we've still got a little bit of ambient light for night fishing, enough to see, but it's not too much that you can't sit in the chair and relax overnight. Because sometimes I'll fish all night overnight. So having a bit of light there is quite cool. And we've run it right up around the front of the brow here. Already on the overnighters we've done, since we've been on it, it's paid for itself. It was like worth every penny to get that put in. And they're not expensive. I got it through Big Blue, and they're, I think, $105 it cost me for um, five meter multicolor LED strip. It's a bit of a nightmare mucking around, sorting it all out. But once we did, it, it was it's definitely worth doing, guys. Because it was branding with Senator and what Grant and the team didn't know at Senator is I've actually pulled out all those red side LEDs which you would have seen in my first video. The red LEDs down each side have all gone and in the bait board the red LEDs gone and I've gone Senator orange LED strip all down both sides and through the bait board as well just to keep that orange look and I've, I'm stoked with it, it looks pretty cool. One, one thing that we've definitely been scratching our heads over for the last two years is supercharging all the lures and but then I started looking into it and I was thinking why don't I put UV lights in the drawer under the bait board put UV lights in there I could put all my lures in there the bottom bangers in there turn on the UV light we can supercharge all the bottom bangers the deep water lures the glowing barkus all that stuff stick them in the drawer supercharge them up while we're going back up on a drift and then pull them out and put them back down and that has been brilliant. I've run the LEDs underneath so it doesn't come out with the drawer but when you slide the drawer in it supercharges everything under there and that's run off an independent switch as well. That's run off the bait board switch. Also I got Hockey to make up stainless steel holders on the side. You may have seen in the old videos I had those rail blazer holder things so I got uh, stainless steel ones made on. It's beefed up the bait board a lot more sturdier so we'll hold all the jigs and stuff, just won't fall out. And they're a bit longer too, so they hold all the bait knives and everything as well. When I first got the Defiant made, I went with the vinyl upholstery. After a short amount of time, I kind of regretted it because sleeping overnight in it, you kind of stick to it and everything. It was, it, it's easy to clean, and so that was a bit of a nightmare. So I went into InStyle Upholstery and saw Pete, I really want it um, covered in cloth. He then changed it from 75 up to 85 foam underneath, so it'd be a lot softer for overnighting. And then also we got, um, he contacted Wiggins and Wiggins actually kind enoughly sponsored the new cloth for Defiant 2.0. So thank you very kindly Wiggins and also thanks uh, Pete from InStyle Upholstery for uh, hooking us up a pretty sharp deal on redoing all the front of the cabin. I didn't do the driver's seat, I've just done all the front bedding up here. Pete also hooked us up a good deal on the carpet, so I've re-carpeted Defiant on the deck. I put a new big patch of wide track on there. If you're looking for wide track uh, and you want the carpet, just see Pete at InStyle Upholstery here in Nelson. He's got heaps of it, and it's pretty reasonable price too. I think it may be 90 to 110 a meter. And I will get asked this the most, just about of anything, 
is why do you have carpet? It must be a nightmare to clean. It's actually easier than that rubber stuff. And not the last boat, the boat before had that rubber tubing stuff and it's just the worst. Shit falls down underneath it, you can't get it out. And I was just like done with that. And the carpet's 10 times easier to clean. I take it out of the boat once every six months and water blast it. But other than that, it sits in the boat and I wash it in the boat. Because it's so well vented and heavy duty, all the water and everything goes through. Defiance deck underneath there looks brand new. And the other thing I've had on the boat actually since day one is I went to Par Rubber and bought, I don't know, five or six sheets of that square stuff for about $7 each. And it's foam, but it's got holes in it. And what I've done is put that all over the deck so it pad pads up the deck so the deck's a lot softer and a lot easier to walk on. And that is a godsend all day fishing. So it makes the deck so much more softer. And that was that's a pretty good um, and cheap upgrade as well, guys. That's pretty much Defiance makeover. We've got the battleship wrap on the boat, on the bait board, all new covered swabs at the front. We've got the 30 litre fridge. We've got the two new NSC Evos. We've got the new Fusion stereo. We've got um, all new uh, multicolored LEDs around the top. And we've got the all orange through the bait board and on the deck lights and also the UV lights on the bait board. Really want to say a thanks to all you guys for supporting my content. Really want to thank ha Andrew at Haven Pleasure Boats, David at Haven Pleasure Boats, and the rest of the team. I also want to thank massive thanks to Tommy and the team at Hawks Bay Marine. Tommy, you're a legend, mate. You battled hard to try and get me some sponsors and stuff, and I know it, ha it hasn't really worked out, but we got some good deals out of it, mate, and I'm stoked, and I, I appreciate all your time. Uh, I want to say a massive thanks to Grant and Anna and the team at uh, Senator. It's been legendary work with you guys, and to be part of the team's been pretty cool. Massive thanks to Davey and Vicky at Swazi. You guys have been uh, a massive supporter of the vlog and my content, and uh, hooking us up with some pretty cool gears, and I uh, appreciate all the time and support. Thanks to Pete at InStyle Upholstery, mate. Uh, thanks for all the hard work you did, and thanks for hooking us up with the sponsorship of the new cloth on the swabs. Certainly is a lot better staying overnight on that. Thanks to uh, Daniel Rodriguez at Simrad, mate. Uh, it's been awesome working with you. I'm still trying to work on that other project that we've been working on, but it's just been a bit of a logistical nightmare, mate. But if we can make it work, it will be next level filming. Keep an eye out for that, guys. A massive thanks to Dan at Richmond Cars and Commercials, mate. Legendary to hook us up the flog wagon, man. That is like, uh, I don't even know what you say about that, man. That's just such an honor and a privilege to be sponsored a wagon. Uh, does mean a lot, because you know, uh, issues I had with the old Prado, that's what sort of held us back traveling anywhere. Massive thanks to Ruben from R Fry Builders. Thanks for your support, mate. It's been uh, awesome to have you on board sponsoring the flog. Does mean a lot, man, to have a local company supporting local content. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, so that is Defiance 2.0 team. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, pretty average review on it, to be fair. Uh, it's a little bit hard to film something exciting at home in the drive. Thanks heaps so much for all your support, uh, your likes, your tips, your shares. Just, just remember, guys, try and stay sane, and uh, we'll get through this, and we'll be out on the water smashing fish in no time. But uh, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video.